Hello folks and welcome to this 15 minute tutorial on PHP. We will cover the following. Installing Laragon or XAMPP. In order to follow along with this tutorial, you will need some software that will allow you to run PHP code on your computer. Laragon is a great program for making quick local hosts and we will be using it in this tutorial. XAMPP can also be used. I have a tutorial on how to install it and we will place a link in the description. Once we have installed our local host and other required software, we will learn how to create a PHP file. There are several data types in PHP. The first one that we will cover is a data type called a string. Variables are used to store or hold data, such as a string. We will examine what concatenation is. We will also cover operators if statements, forms, arrays, and loops. First, we need to install some software in order to run PHP on our computers. If you already have a web server with PHP, you can use that. A common program for web developers is XAMPP. You can download the program for free at this website. For this tutorial, I will be using Laragon. Once you have Laragon installed, go ahead and open the program. You will get a window that looks like this. Go ahead and click on the Start All button. We will then need to create a test site. So go ahead and right click on the Web button and then select Quick App and then Blank. You will be prompted for a name for the test site. I will call my site PHP Project. PHP code can be written with pretty much any text editor, such as the one that comes with the Windows. For this project, we will be using Visual Studio Code. Find the folder with the project name PHP Project and drag it into Visual Studio. You will now be able to see your project in Visual Studio. When writing code in HTML, we would name our first file index.html. However, we will be working with PHP, so we need to create a PHP file called index.php. Naming it index will make it a home page and browsers will recognize it as a home page when the directory is open. Go back to Visual Studio and double click underneath PHP project. A little box will open up that will allow you to enter the name index.php. There are a number of ways to get to the test web page, but the easiest way is to type localhost in the address bar and then select PHP project. Go ahead and select PHP project. Right now, the page should appear like this, totally blank. Let's begin by outputting some HTML in our PHP file. Go ahead and open Visual Studio and then create an HTML boilerplate like this. Save the file and go back to the test site to see what we have. If you see Hello World, you are on the right track. Now, I can get the same output by just typing Hello World without PHP like so. The words appear the same, so what's the difference? Well, one of the differences can be seen when we view the source code on our browsers by right clicking and selecting view page source. The words generated by pure HTML shows us the tags. In this case, we have paragraph tags. The words generated by using PHP only show the text. The PHP that was used to generate the text are not shown. This will become more relevant as you use PHP more. Let's go back to our PHP code. Let's make a note that lines of PHP code must end with a semicolon. If you get an error message, this is one of the first things you should check. A string is just a sequence of characters. The text hello world that we generated would be considered to be a string. A note to make about strings is that when they are used in PHP, they must be surrounded by quotation marks. It can be the double quotation or a single quotation. There are uses for both. We'll get into this in a later lesson. An integer is a whole number. They can be used in such things as arithmetic. 
An integer should not be surrounded in a quotation marks. Let's go back to Visual Studio and echo out the number 4, like this. We can go back to the web page and see that the number 4 is there. We can now process some simple math. Let's process 4 plus 5, like this, by using integers. If we go back to the page, we can see that the answer 9 is being displayed. A variable in PHP is a name of memory location that holds data. In PHP, a variable is declared by using the dollar sign followed by the variable name. Go back to Visual Studio and echo out your name like this. We can now see our name displayed on the web page. Variables can be numbers also. Let's create three more variables as follows. We can now output the results by using echo dollar sign num. Go back to the web page and see the number 7. The PHP concatenation operator, period, is used to combine two string values to create one string. Let's create the following sentence concatenating strings and variables. Let's try to output the following. 3 plus 4 is equal to 7. Now go back to the web page and see that the variables are being used to output the sentence. We can now change the variables to output a new sentence. For example, change the variable number 1 to 7. If you now go back to the web page, you will see the sentence 7 plus 4 is equal to 11. A PHP operator is a symbol used to perform operations on operands. In simple words, operators are used to perform operations on variables or values such as adding or subtracting. We also have division and multiplication operators. There is also an assignment operator. The variable on the left gets set to the expression on the right, like in this example. Comparison operators are used to check if two variables are equal. To do this, we use a double equal sign like this. If we want to check if they are not equal, we place an exclamation mark in front of the double equal sign. We also have logic operators, for example, dollar sign $x and dollar sign $y, and they're used to check if both are true. Dollar sign $x or dollar sign $y are used to check if $x or $y is true. There are a lot more operators, but that's enough for now. An if statement executes some code if one condition is true. Let's create a variable called registered and let's set it to equal to true, like this. Dollar sign registered equals true. Now, if the person is registered, we want to display you are registered. Now go ahead and see what is displayed on the web page. Now let's go back to Visual Studio and change the variable dollar sign registered equals true to dollar sign registered equals false. Save and go back to the web page and see what displays. You can see that PHP is displaying the text based on the conditions contained in the if statement. We have the if statement that echoes when it's true. And if it's not true, we have a little section here that the else, which echoes out another statement. Let's create some basic form tags in HTML like this. We can create the opening and closing form tags. We can then input tags with a type of text and an input tag with a type of submit like this. If we go back to our web page, we can see that we now have a text area where text can be entered as well as a submit button. At the moment, the button doesn't do anything. If, however, we add action equals process.php like this, 
it will send all the information to a file called process.php. We will create this file in a little bit. We now have to declare the method. We can put the information in the URL or post to a page. Posting to a page is frequently used. Update the code on Visual Studio as follows. If we go back to the web page, it looks the same, but if we press the submit button, we will get an error as it is trying to connect to process.php and that doesn't exist yet. In order to access the form information, we have to give our field a name. So let's update our code as follows. Go ahead and check what the web page looks like now. We now have to create our process.php file. The file should be created in the same directory as the index.php file and should be named process.php. We can now get the data that has been posted to this page. So let's create a variable called $name. To process the posted data, we need to use a special variable with an underscore and the word POST in capital letters followed by square brackets. This is an array and you need to type the name of the variable you want stored inside quotation marks. An array is a special variable which can hold more than one value at a time. For example, let's say we wanted to store the name of each person in a family of five. We could create five variables such as $name1, $name2, and so on. Instead, we can use an array to store all this related information. We can store that information using just one line. Create a variable called people that contains an array with all the names. Each name should be surrounded in quotation marks and separated by a comma like this. First of all, let's output the whole array. If we go to the web page, we can now see the array printing out all the elements in the array. Arrays are numbered starting with zero. So the first name in the array is Bob and it is recognized as an element zero. This is important when we refer to individual elements. So now let's output only the second name in the array. We can use echo and the variable dollar sign people followed by square brackets. So the second element, Jane, is number one. Go to the website to see the name Jane being outputted. Arrays can contain integers instead of strings, but this is good enough for now. There are a number of different types of loops in PHP. One of the most useful types of loops is the for each loop. We can write a simple for each loop to go through our array that was saved in people, like so. If we check the web page, we can see all the names being output, but they are all stuck together. We can fix this easily by concatenating a space after each name as follows. We can use the for each loop with integers as well. Let's say that we have a bunch of numbers and we want to add all the numbers in the array. We can create a variable called numbers to store the information in an array. We can create a variable called dollar sign sum and set it to zero to begin with. We can then create a for each loop that will loop through the array to get a total of the numbers it contains. The code can be written like this. So initially the variable sum is zero. The first number in the array is then added to it and stored as sum. The pattern then repeats. Sum is equal now to 5. The second number in the array is now added to it and stored as sum. The pattern then repeats again. Sum is now equal to 8. The third number in the array is added to it and stored as sum. Sum is now equal to 15. As there are no more numbers in the array to loop through, the loop stops and the final result a 15 is output. That's a really quick basic introduction to PHP. I hope you got something from this tutorial and that you had fun practicing. 
stay tuned for some more advanced tutorials on PHP in the future.